All right. All right. Uh, okay. Um, welcome to Drift Guitars. My name is Chris. And I'm Matt. And we are back for a, a second episode of a series of um, tools that are going to help make you a better guitar builder. At an intermediate level. At an intermediate level or repair tech. I think most of these tools, yes, I would say these tools are all specifically for people who are building acoustic guitars mm -hmm. and building mm -hmm. them, not repairing. Uh, very, very, some, some maybe for, for repair, but mostly just for building. Yeah. And uh, uh, just like the last video, I own all of these tools or have owned all of these tools and they just kick butt. We do want to thank Stumac for giving us all of these and uh, no yeah. questions asked on their part. Uh, yeah. They gave them to us and because I own them, we're going to give them away. I don't need them. So we're not only going to talk about them here, but we're going to give them away to you guys. Um, guitar building is a very rewarding hobby, but it can be very prohibitively expensive on the front end. So the least that we can do for you guys watching and supporting us is to maybe help you guys yeah, get started. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and then uh, leave us a comment. And kind of the same as we did last time, uh, it just sort of helps us game the algorithm a little bit. Um, if you leave a comment, if you, know, if you want all of these tools, then leave a comment for each tool you want individually. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's only, if you already have two of these tools and you only want one of them, then just leave us a comment yep. for the one that you want. But yeah, yep. and we'll pick someone at random and uh, we'll contact you, by the way. Um, We'll reach out to you and uh, no WhatsApp. No, there's no WhatsApp. Also, if uh, someone sounds like they're uh, from Driftwood, but they ask you for money, also that's, not us. Not us. Not yeah, us. Not um, us. There are bots on the YouTubes uh, mm -hmm. causing these issues for people who are doing giveaways, but we're not going to let them stop us from doing giveaways. You just have to be a little bit internet street smart. We'll, we'll reach out to you yeah. if, if you're the winner directly uh, via email. And uh, we won't ask you for money. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly that. <laughs> Mostly that. We want to give things away. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So yeah, you do need to be a subscriber though if you want to win any of these. So make sure you do subscribe, please. <laughs> yep. uh, so let's start off with the first tool here. This is the Stumac fret slotting miter box, and this is not just the miter box. Miter. But miter. Barely know her. <laughs> <laughs> do you like her? I miter. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, this is not just the miter box, but Stumac also sent us the saw as well and uh boy let me tell you uh before i my cnc machine this is what i used uh, i still sometimes use this jig uh this is better than my jig <laughs> like we're noticing a theme here is that as as stumac stumac doesn't just rest on their laurels they keep making these things better and better uh which is really really cool of them mm -hmm. and uh makes you mad though because i own this and it's not as good <laughs> <laughs> but the way that this thing works is obviously i'm not going to take this out of the plastic just because we want to make sure that uh whoever wins this we don't uh send you something that's used these things will all lock into place so that we can get this this salt in here uh so that it's perfectly square the other thing that's really cool is it also by adjusting these gauges here it's going to allow us to set the depth of the slot that we're cutting which is really cool but the real magic to the whole system is that when you take this and you combine it with their um their fret slotting templates is that you'll temporarily attach your fretboard blank uh, to the template and then it just locks into place for each fret slot that you need to cut. Oh nice. So, so there's no accurate. there's no measuring required. Uh, it's super okay. accurate and you don't have to measure. I remember my first few guitars with my calipers just like yeah. trying to lay my frets out and then inevitably you end up with a couple of frets that aren't perfectly square. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have intonation issues and it's a whole thing. This is a two hundred I'm sorry, this is a three hundred and seven dollar kit a kit as the brits say which us americans should adopt because i love it <laughs> uh it's a really great you can kit. still spell color with you though all right? we're right. not taking that from you <laughs> uh, but this is just absolutely killer man uh you set it up especially if you're kind of building the same type of instruments uh, a lot of times you can set this up it'll do ukuleles it'll do mandolins uh, electric guitars acoustic guitars basses anything that's a fretted instrument this will work for it uh, you can also use it for just cutting uh hand cutting um, squares, uh, you know, square ends on pieces of wood just for mm -hmm. quick stuff. It's got holes in it down here, so you can literally, if you've got a spot in your shop, you can just leave it screwed down to your workbench and just it's always a, at the ready. Uh, not necessary for guitar building, but really helpful. The prevailing theme in all these things I'm seeing is that it's like, because uh, I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, well, you know, I can just do this and this for cheaper. And it's like, yeah, you can, but again, this is a video for intermediate builders. If, you're, if you've been in the hobby for a minute and you're to the point now where you want to save time, and you want to be more efficient, and you want to be more accurate, mm -hmm. then, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And uh, like we mentioned in the last one, Stumac offers lifetime warranties on literally everything, whether it breaks or it just wears out, even if it's 15 years from now and it just, you'd say you dull the blades on your, your saw. Uh, I wish I had known this a while ago. You don't have to buy a new saw. They'll send you a new one. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> just say like, hey, I bought the saw once, uh, send me a new one, and they'll mail you a new one. And that's just that's just killer. So you are spending a chunk of money, but you're buying it once and you never have to look back. So yeah, it's gonna make you a better guitar builder uh, and it's gonna make them more accurate. And honestly, these things make guitar building more enjoyable because I know that for me, the biggest thing that bogs you down and makes you want to quit is all those mistakes, those little dumb mistakes you make along the way. Like hiring me? Like, yes, the biggest, largest <laughs> mistake I've ever made in my career, hiring Matt Miller. <laughs> uh, okay, so moving on to our next item. This is a thickness caliper. Um, it seems pretty self-explanatory, right? I held off. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so... Like, I don't know if I have to edit this video or if you do, but oh my god. Why, Chris? Why? I hate so much. There we go. All right. This bad boy, I held off on for years. Um, I did go ahead and get the metric version. They, you're welcome, world. <laughs> this is yeah. the metric version of the thickness caliper. Only dumb Americans like myself want imperial, uh, but this is metric. Uh, these are available in both. This is a $211 tool. Um, I, for years, just used my calipers, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, trusty Stumac calipers, which work great. The only issue with this is that you're only able to measure the thickness at the very edge right. of, your, uh, of your wood, um, which, you know, you can extrapolate and hope <laughs> that it's right, but I know for us, you know, you guys have seen me. I use my drum sander, um, and sometimes you're getting different measurements on the edges than you are in the middle. In fact, a lot of times you do want your edges to be slightly thinner than your middle. This is going to give you the ability to really check and make sure that you're getting either your top or your back um, at the correct thickness throughout the whole piece. Now, especially if you're doing um, carved top instruments, violins, uh, mandolins. Arch tops, yeah. Yeah, arch tops. You you need this. This isn't a, this is not a uh, um, <laughs> this is not an option. You have to have one of these, yeah. uh, which is going to allow you to be able to do that. <laughs> I I use this as an insurance policy on all of my tops. I always go back and I check uh, check to make sure that I'm getting good accurate thicknesses on all of my tops. So you know it's a, like I said, it's two hundred. It's basically two hundred twelve dollars. It's not a fun. This is not like a sexy tool to buy. Like as far as like I think it's visually. I was gonna say I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I, I like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a visually sexy tool, but it's one of these tools that can be difficult to buy because what it happens is you spend all that money and it just does one really specific thing and you use it for a few seconds per guitar and then you move on. But. Uh, if you really want, if you're really serious about making guitars that sound really good, acoustic guitars, knowing for sure that you're getting certain thicknesses across the tops of your guitar is 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 is, is, is mandatory. So you need one of these, um, and uh, this will really help out being able to voice your tops to the thicknesses that you want. So hang it on your wall because people will really know you're a luthier when you've got something cool <laughs> like this. This and some hand planes, boy, and a, and a good apron. You don't even got to build anything. People just can be like. <laughs> right. That guy knows more than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy knows a thing or two about wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so the last one is a big one. The thing that I and so many luthiers do when somebody hands me a guitar and says, I, I built this. The first thing that you do is you look at the binding. I, I, I not, it's not just me. I talk to other luthiers about this. I'm like, do you do this too? And they do. You look at the binding because bindings are like, the canary in the coal mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine. 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 Was mind? <laughs> canary here's, in the coal mind. Here's a canary in your mind right now. <laughs> yeah, that's <dude>. right. <laughs> uh, is, are they even? Are they really thin in one spot or thick in another are spot? Gaps? Are there gaps? Do they match the contours of the sides? Mm-hmm. Uh, binding is one of those scary things that we do on guitars, especially when we're starting out. You've built yeah. the body and now you got to cut the binding and it is a pucker fest like big time because now you're gonna route this huge chunk off of it. So like we mentioned in the last video, you can get away with just the Stumac router base that you would use for a Dremel tool or a Fordham tool and that's gonna get you there. But anybody who's done at least one guitar knows that on the back of the guitar, it has uh, well, it has a 15 foot radius or whatever radius you choose to put on the backs of your guitars and it also isn't flat, it slopes down. That problem 
becomes even larger if you're talking about arch topped instruments like uh, like mandolins or arch topped guitars. Mm -hmm. So the only way to get a true binding channel that is parallel to the sides of your instrument is to use a binding jig. So that's what we have next. Uh, I'm gonna get all this on the table. Hang on. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's It'll fine. pop out. It's yeah. good. It's oh boy. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure it still works. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Brock at Stumac sent us all this stuff and was so kind to even throw in, as the AVE would say, the Borsch <laughs> Colt one horsepower. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Anybody who watches the AVE will know that what Borsch is. Uh, it's a Bosch laminate trimmer, the one horsepower laminate trimmer mm -hmm. that then also all hooks up to this amazing that I used for at least a decade. The, what do they call this? The True Channel Binding Jig. Um, and they've also thrown in all of the, the, um, the, the bearings and everything you need for doing literally any binding size that you want to do. But what this allows you to do is to mount your guitar onto this base and get it perfectly perpendicular, get the sides perpendicular to the work surface. It then suspends the router over top of it, almost like a pin router, uh, and allows it to follow the contours of the sides and not the top um, or the back. And you do this, a uh, little bit of learning curve getting it set up, and you're gonna be uh, so satisfied because for the first time ever, if you haven't used a jig like this until now, you're gonna end up with binding that looks like real binding, binding. <laughs> binding that makes other luthiers say, "Oh, hey, what's up?" Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah like you this know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a little bit uh, of a sketch fest at first, just because you're like, uh, "Am I doing this right?" Uh, but this jig. Uh, I used for absolutely years and years and years. The only reason that I got rid of this jig, um, I gave it to a buddy of mine who's gotten into guitar building, um, is because uh, it can it takes a little bit of time to set up per instrument. So this really is the perfect intermediate binding jig for you because if you're only doing you know uh, one to ten guitars a year, this is perfect because it just takes a little bit of time to set up per guitar. Whereas mm -hmm. for the jig that I use now is quick. Uh, I, I can I can just do guitars all over the place with it. So so this 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 for four hundred and thirty five dollars plus a hundred and twenty for this this laminate trimmer. Uh, so this is by far the most expensive thing on the list. If you've been sitting on the fence about buying one of these, I get it price wise, but I, I'd say if you're going to be building it continually well, at least two <clears throat> guitars a year, buy this. I, I, I just know that probably the number one thing that you guys out there in luthier land are struggling with on your first few guitars is probably the binding, where you're having issues with it. Uh, the fit and finish just doesn't look good. And this is the number one thing that you could buy that's really going to uh, increase that quality. The other mm -hmm. thing that's interesting about it too is that it's not advertised this way, but it comes with this base here, which works really good for like OMs, down to parlors, up to dreadnoughts and jumbos. Um, but you can actually drill new holes in this whole base if you want to fit some odd shaped instruments. Or what I had done in the past is make a new template base here and I, I got one to work for all the way down to sopranos, ukuleles oh, wow. and uh, mandolins. So you can you can make this work for so many different instruments and it's really, really cool. Nice. Um, plus, you look like a real luthier. <laughs> Which is, it's important, you know, you gotta look serious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, these three these three tools that we've shown you today, uh, just like the last video, even more so here, these are the tools that are going to really help you step up your game, make you a better guitar builder. Uh, it's a new year. It's a new you. And <laughs> and and maybe your goal has been to make a better <clears throat> This is the year that I'm going to make a good guitar. Right. This is the <laughs> one that's going to be like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound great. It's going to look great. When somebody holds it, they're not going to find mistakes on it. And all of these tools are going to help get you there. We are not doing any sort of affiliate links on these things. We will put links in the description, but uh, th there's nothing in this for us, honestly. We're really no. doing this because what we want to do with this channel is to encourage as many people as possible to get into this hobby uh, or, or this as, as a form of income and yeah. uh, you can do it and these tools are going to help you get there. It's an investment. That's what you tell your, tell your significant other anyway. <laughs> yeah. We, this is what we've been training for people. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Make yeah. sure that you do like and subscribe. You have to subscribe to win. Let us know why you want the specific tool that you, that we've got here. Yeah. Uh, Leave a comment for each tool. We'll be Just doing, we'll be picking, uh, at random from people who, who fulfill all of those criteria and yeah. you're going to get some of these cool things and, uh, yeah, man. So thanks, y'all. We'll Thank you, you guys. We appreciate you.